Hello. Yeah, this session we are going to um, do some hands-on for system management settings and uh, some configurations. Um, yeah, so let's start. Yeah, last uh, session we introduced briefly for system management and settings. It's not difficult and fairly easy. Um, but uh, some settings need to be done at the very beginning when you configure if it's a new system. Like, uh, <clears throat> yeah. Now let's uh, uh, start from business uh, management, like a first year settings. A different company has different fis fiscal years. Uh, start say like uh, uh, Microsoft every July it's uh, start of the uh, fiscal year yeah some companies uh, start from different uh, months yeah let's set up for uh, January the first and uh, the period could be uh, quarterly or semi annually or or annually. Yeah, it's based on business needs. Okay. Yeah, now we set up as uh, July the first. Next, uh, let's take a look about uh, um, business closure days. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you open a new tab. So uh, for for business closure. Uh, usually, uh, we close on holidays, right? Like I say, uh, we try uh, to set up a, 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 a Merry a Christmas. Ah, yeah. Okay. Start date is uh, uh, 24th. Okay. Yeah. For one day event. We set up uh, January the 1st. Yeah. Yeah, we set up uh, the uh, business career days. Yeah, for Q, it's a container of uh, uh, cases. Every single user, new user, when created, the, that user associated with its personal Q automatically. Yeah, so those demo users were uh, created uh, from the trial. So I've already uh, cleaned from Microsoft Admin Center and released all the licenses. Let's uh, now uh, create a new queue. We call it level three. Yeah, that's a public queue. I created it, so I'm uh, the owner. Okay, so we are going to um, add the, some uh, yeah, let's save and close. This is a sales temporary uh, ta uh, territories uh, used for, say, for example, in field service, a different uh, 
technicians that are dispatched to different uh, uh, sites, th which those sites are uh, associated with uh, different uh, uh, territories. Uh, in later um, hands on, we are going to use uh, uh, California for some field service uh, uh, hands on. In, in sites, it can be associated with physical sites. Say uh, one site is on, uh, yeah, for those uh, without an asterisk or star, they, they are option fields. You can leave it empty. Like 101 Main Street for, for, for the uh, site address, okay, uh, in New York. Okay, we created a, a, a new site. For this site, it's a Eastern time zone. Okay, we created site one. We created another site, site two. We say it's a uh, uh, two two main street. I we say it's a uh, uh, New Zealand. Yeah, next we are going to set up the uh, currency. For United States, we are going to find the US dollars. This uh, exchange rate is uh, static. Uh, the, it's not very uh, useful. So the developer need to uh, write a, to assign the dynamic exchange rate. That needs some uh, development. For automatic record creation and update rules, Say so when the email uh, came in and uh, it can automatically create the case and the route to a corresponding queue. Yeah, here we create a new facility and the equipment. Yeah, so for uh, equipment like uh, trucks or some a few a few the sites uh, uh, like uh, ladders or, or uh, you know boots all all those are equipments right to go to, go to do the uh, field service on site so we need those equipments yeah mm.
yeah, we can add a new um, facilitated equipment. Yeah, safety equipment that we, we associate with a side, side, uh, side what? Yeah, it associated or mapped with uh, site what? With your physical site. Yeah, if we need to use the trucks, then trucks are associated with uh, a site two. If uh, needing the uh, the trucks, we need to go to the site two to take the trucks. And next is a resource group. The resource could be um, field technicians, right? Uh, yeah. Like uh, uh, we, those technicians could have different skills, right? Say uh, some technicians is a uh, uh, skillful for uh, replacement. Some of the technician is skillful for um, a new installation, right? So that that are all resource. We, we name it as set one resource group or set one members. Yeah, then we save it. After saving, then the resources, uh, uh, it's clickable. Then we can add the resources. Then we add the few uh, technicians here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we add these three resources uh, to this resource group. Yeah, as a set one resource group. Yeah. Next is a services. Yeah, before we configure a service, we configure a subject because uh, the the service uh, 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 sometimes uh, will use the uh, subjects. Yeah, say so the subjects. We added a, a new subject. Yeah, we give it a, a title. A resource subjects. Resource uh, subjects uh, uh, can have the hierarchy. Yeah, so we have uh, resource subjects then we can edit the, the subjects. Yeah, we can add the, the child subject. Then this new subject will with the parent subjects of the one we just created. Uh, resource subjects, yeah. Okay, technician is a uh, it's a child subject. Yeah, we create another child subject on site support. And we add the one more dispatcher.
Yeah, so this dispatcher um, assign those resources to customers on site. Now we add the few subjects. Yeah, we remove the uh, duplicate. Oh, cannot be duplicate. There is association. Oh, yeah, we leave it over there so far. Now we are uh, coming back to service. Then when we create the service, then we can uh, name the subject. We create a new service as a new service. Initial reason we pick up uh, either pending or arrived. That's a service is a different status. Yeah. Customer requests it, then we reserve a service. Then the service is in progress and, and the resource arrived. For scheduling, say, uh, yeah, the, the start from beginning from what time? Yeah. And the required resources. Yeah. We. Yeah, now uh, let's search for site one resource group. Yeah, that's uh, what we come with this service, member of site one resource. Yeah, then we save and close. This new service is, is uh, associated with site one resource. Yeah, we associate with site one resource group. Next. For connection rules, it's mostly used for some family members uh, working in the same company. Yeah, you can, you can see we put connection role category as a family. Family member role, we give it a name. Yeah, we only choose a uh, few record types. Say for example, contact. Yeah, then we save it. Yeah, we have a family member role. In real life, uh, some family members uh, could work for the same company. Next, we are going to talk about uh, another configuration. Service management. Some of uh, them we've already uh, explained earlier. Like a, a service level agreement, how many uh, 
hours you need to respond to the customer or fix an issue. For entitlement, say it, it has a, a defined if you are VIP customer or premium customer. So holiday schedule, say, uh, usually it, it's not working, but if it's for VIP customer, they may have a 24 times seven uh, support plan. Okay, next. We go to um, our next uh, uh, part, service management. Yeah, for Q, we mentioned the uh, and uh, set the level three Q. Yeah, the same configuration may be done from different uh, uh, places. Parent and a child. Uh, case settings. Sometimes uh, the same issue uh, uh, could uh, happen in uh, the same company's multiple department. Say if it is a bug, right? Say the same bug could happen in HR department's instance or production uh, uh, instance. Another scenario to set up the parent and the child uh, uh, cases is say, uh, uh, th there is a bug across many different customers, but with the same bug. Say once that bug is fixed, then all the cases raised from uh, those different companies under the, this uh, bug, then as a child, the cases can be all closed. Yeah, then this is a case title. Say for example, internet uh, done. Or, uh, yeah. Or uh, to to contact uh, this person for this uh, account. That's a parent and a child case settings. Yeah, routing rule. It's uh, for. Say, for example, when the case was created, there is a mechanism to route different cases to different queues. Say, uh, certain cases are routed to uh, level one, certain cases uh, are routed to level two, or a premium or VIP customer. There is a mechanism. Say, when the, re when the case is raised, right? Say, um, if uh, it's raised from a VIP customer, then it's automatically routed to VIP's queue. Or if the case is manually created by someone, then, then the, it can be manually uh, assigned uh, uh, from uh, the front end uh, support also. Yeah, this automatic record creation and update rule, if the e uh, emails was sent from customer, then that can be converted to a case and uh, uh, based on the uh, keywords, then uh, to do the uh, uh, routing to a different queue.
subjects, we just uh, uh, did a quick demo. Yeah, yeah. We have uh, the uh, yeah the new subjects for uh, resource subjects. Uh, for service uh, level agreement, it's for defining uh, how long uh, will it take for the support to respond, and uh, how how many hours for the tech agent to be on site and fix issue. That's a, a service uh, level agreement. We create a, a we created a premium support. As LA. Then after saving, then we can add the new uh, SLA item. Premium support, SLA item. Uh, first response by KPI. So that's uh, say how, how long it takes to response a uh, customer. The successful criteria is for, for example, we resolve the case. We resolve the issue. Yeah, SLA KPI instance. Yeah, resolved by KPI. Then we choose equals. I will create a new SLA KPI instance. Premium support SLA instance. We save it. We assign this to myself. Okay, we save it and we uh, close it. Okay, so now it show up. We added it. Uh, we uh, save it. That's a, a failure if if uh, we cannot resolve this uh, issue. Uh, within six hours, then it's considered as a failure. Yeah, if we cannot fix the issue within six hours, so that means we did not meet that SLA. Then we activate. Now it's taking effective. Then we can use this premium as a default. SLA. So now this uh, SLA to fix issue within six hours is our default SLA. Yeah, we set it as a default.
if later on we need to modify this SLA, say for example, we change it uh, from six hours to eight hours to resolve issue, then we can de deactive and make the change. Okay, next, we are talking about the entitlement. So for the entitlement, there are some uh, uh, entitlement uh, as samples. Case volume uh, software entitlement for uh, this company. Yeah, this is uh, entitlement for this company. Uh, number of cases means uh, this uh, customer can create uh, 20 cases uh, altogether. Or this uh, customer can uh, get support for 20 hours. So either by case or by hours. So yeah, usually uh, the support cannot be uh, unlimited. So it, it has the number of cases or number of hours. Number of hours, uh, like 20 hours. If a customer need uh, more than 20 hours, then customer may need to pay extra. Yeah, this is our customer's uh, entitlement. Start from what time to, uh, to what time? Yeah, from uh, 20, 21 October 12th to 2022 20, October 12th. Then we put it active, yeah. Now it's uh, uh, effective. Yeah, this is a customer's uh, entitlement. Yeah, with uh, 20 hours support. We can, we can use this uh, entitlement as a default one. Now it's uh, effective. Next, uh, we are going to take a look. Holiday schedule, it's easy. We just uh, uh, added uh, which schedule is for holiday. Yeah, say for example, like Christmas, it's not a week, weekday hours, right? Christmas, we can set, uh, say, a Christmas schedule. Yeah. Then we add the uh, yeah. That's a uh, Christmas holiday. Yeah. Yeah, okay, we set up two holidays schedules. The service configuration settings. Yeah, it opened the system uh, settings. If we want to uh, disable SLA, no. 
for case available values. So that's a few status for the case. At the very beginning of the case, it's waiting for details from customer. Yeah, customer didn't provide uh, enough customers or errors. When it happened, uh, does it cause any outage or errors? Waiting for details. After that, we do the research and the work in progress until we resolve the issue. Uh, those tablets, say for example, uh, for the uh, VIP customers, we have uh, VIP email tablet or for premium, we have premium tablet. Entitlement uh, tablets, article tablets, the, those tablets can be used for a similar uh, situation. Yeah. Business closure. Yeah, Christmas Day, we close. Yeah. Yeah, Christmas, we don't provide support. Services, resources, groups, and the facilities, equipment, and sites. We did the demo earlier. Uh, next, we are going to talk about ad administration and the system settings. Yeah, we can open from yeah here. We can go through it quickly. We go. We are going to open settings and uh, uh, administrations. Okay, we open administrations, uh, auto numbers. Say for example, when we create a new case, then the case number need to be uh, unique. But the number could uh, start with configured to start with uh, CAS. Yeah. Yeah, for for C, uh, case is CS for knowledge articles, we, we can use a prefix KA or KB, KB article. Yeah, then it uh, uh, with uh, uh, four digits or five digits. Uh, first CS, then the dash few digits, then sur surface length. You can select a five or six. Yeah. So we can change it to a six. Yeah, this is a auto number provided by the system. Some company may not want to use uh, CAS. They, they may want to use a meaningful naming conventions. Then that needs some uh, uh, simple development to uh, complete. Yeah, next uh, is uh, language. Uh, for United States, we use uh, English. For the user, they can set up to personal settings to use a different language. But uh, for here, it's used for whole organization. 
uh, it's base language, we use English. Yeah, last session, we showed the Microsoft Yammer. Uh, in Microsoft, uh, we use this as a collaboration platform, uh, but not many people use it. Uh, uh, only some Microsoft employees has a Yammer account, but uh, lots of people don't have a Yammer account. So we open a new tab. Yeah, here we are going to open system settings. Lots of them are default. So some of them we don't change. Like the first one, allow tax wrapping in form fields. So when the uh, tax is a, a end, it wraps to next land. And next is a first name, last name. Yeah. So nothing uh, to uh, explain. Next is to set a, a block the file extensions. Say for certain files, you don't want to allow dynamics to attach such as .exe file, you can add it here. Uh, usually we use uh, the relevant search. Uh, we leave it uh, checked, but now when we uh, Talk, when we are taking this session, relevant search is migrated to uh, Power Platform Admin Center. Uh, for enabling Bing Maps, it's useful if we have the field services. Yeah, next, uh, say, for example, like uh, enable learning paths or something, we, we, uh, we mostly don't use it. We can turn it off. Yeah, next is... Uh, uh, going to take a look at format. Yeah, say here uh, we use uh, uh, English, so the formats are all English format. Audit, if we start uh, audit, if we enable start auditing, then we can audit users' access when the user logged into Dynamics, uh, what had the user done? Yeah, then we can uh, enable to audit a sales entity, marketing entity, or customer service entity. Yeah. Usually, um, company need to make a decision uh, if it's extremely uh, uh, necessary to enable audit and how many things you want to audit and how many entities you are going to audit. Because more audits are enabled, like more impact to the system performance and more usage of storage. Okay, so here is a, um, the emails, mostly we use uh, server-side synchronization. So for marketing, here not too much uh, to change. Uh, for customization here, one thing we want to uh, mention, if uh, you have issues with plug-in, then you can enable plug-in a trace lock. So uh, if you choose all, then all the plug-in activities will be, uh, can be traced, then it impacts the system performance and uh, uh, storage, or you can only enable exception. So that means if uh, the plugin uh, had some uh, errors, then with exceptions, then it will uh, uh, save to the lock. Yeah, for reports, uh, there is no specific configuration. Yeah, it. Uh, it does not matter which report won't move up. For calendar, so that's uh, if you set up a 
appointment, it uh, maximumly can can last uh, like a uh, fifteen days. So goals then is uh, say how many days we want to wrap up the uh, for go goals. So for sales, uh, mostly we don't uh, change it. A service, we don't change. That's for the uh, case has the four status. Yeah, we collect uh, more details. Then we do researching. Then we work in progress. Then till it is resolved. Yeah, system notification. So that uh, means uh, what what we want to be noticed when the system has something. Yeah, here we we don't have a system notification. Yeah. Resource in use, so that means for customized entities. So maximum we can use one thousand five hundred, but we only use the three hundred eighty five or twenty five percent. Yeah, we uh, took a look of Yammer uh, earlier. We don't use it often nowadays. Next, we are going to go through security model. Security model is a very important uh, in Dynamics 365. First of all, if for users and uh, teams, Say so for example, if a user is a member of multiple different teams, if team A has less privilege than team B, but when the user is a member of both team A and team B, then the user has a cumulative uh, privilege. That means the, the user get more. Uh, so for security use uh, roles, so that means uh, what kind of privilege can this user to do on which entities, right? Say so for business users, so there is a root business uh, unit and uh, maybe a child business unit. So it's a security boundary. So for user can only belong to one business unit, if the user is North America, uh, belongs to North America business unit, it cannot be uh, Asia Pacifics. Field security profile, that means when different users uh, check different fields, we, we want to have a certain user to be open to certain fields, but some users cannot uh, view or read certain fields. Then we add the different users to field uh, security profiles. For hierarchy security, that it's, uh, yeah, that's just uh, inherited uh, uh, security. Position is used uh, not often, very less. Here, yeah, so let's uh, take a look quickly. First of all, we open a Power Platform uh, Admin Center. In Power Platform Admin Center, there, there are uh, two environments. Uh, one is a default one. We don't touch it then we open uh, another environment. From this uh, environment, we can oh, click edit. 
from here we can see a security group that it defines who which user can access this instance so far we didn't uh, set any security group but if we set up the security group only the member uh, uh, members of that security group can access this instance Okay, next. We take a look of uh, teams and uh, security roles. Uh, okay, so to check security, there are two places. One is unified interface or power platform. Yeah, let's uh, open here uh, settings or from here, go to the uh, uh, system settings. Here it's uh, users uh, and the permissions, yeah. We can see uh, we, yeah, we, we uh, create a new team. Sales managers. We choose our root BU. Then we choose uh, the administrator, system administrator. Team type as a uh, owner. And next. Usually we use uh, teams as owner, not use organization because if you use organization there are only two uh, levels of uh, privilege either all or none now we added a new sales managers team next it's a uh, out of box security roles uh, can be uh, used for uh, the sales managers I remember there is a security role called sales manager. Yeah. Then uh, we grant the sales managers out of box security role to the new team we created sales managers. Yeah. The sales managers team is created by us. Next. Next, we, we can check the security roles. Let's uh, see the sales manager's security role. Uh, sales manager. Here is one key point is, if you want to customize the security role, it's uh, better not to customize directly on out of box security role, because later on you may forget what you made changes. Instead, it's best practice is to copy this security role and give, give it a different name. So we give it a, a sales managers. Then when we do the customization, we do the copied security roles. Then we can check it from uh, uh, system settings, uh, security roles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Earlier, let's open security roles. Earlier, we created the security uh, sales managers. Uh, gradually, system settings are uh, um, gradually migrated to Power Platform admin centers. Now, see the sales 
uh, managers, what can we do with those uh, different uh, entities like a uh, core uh, rec records? Like f for accounts, it can read, write, But uh, say for ACI view mapper, sales managers does not have any uh, privilege. If yeah, it it granted gradually from no to user to business unit to parent and the business unit to to uh, organization. Yeah, it can be set up granularly uh, with uh, different uh, security rules. Because uh, sales managers uh, do, do not ha have uh, uh, all privilege in marketing entities. Yeah, so we made some change. But if we don't click save and close, then the the, the, the yeah the, the change would not take effect. Next, uh, we take a look of uh, a field security a uh, profile. Uh, we need to go to uh, customizations to do the configuration of field uh, security profiles. I will create a new one. Say so we give it the name sales managers. Yeah. Once we save it, then we can configure. And sales managers, for example, we select a team. We add the uh, team's member, yeah, of this team, yeah. Then the member of this team can see or read one of the field. Say, for example, we allow sales managers to read one field. Let's pick up a few. A month. Allows sales managers to read a month field. Only sales manager can read, and his uh, team can read this amount value. There are two amounts. One is a quote invoice, one is for order invoice. Yes, other users cannot read the amount value, but a sales manager can read. Yeah. 
he can only read, but cannot update to change the value. That this is a field security profile. Yeah, we make a, a conclusion. Secure, uh, yeah, secure rules, key points. So first out of box rows, uh, we have a cert, a some out of box rows. Of course, when we install more uh, apps, there are more um, out of box security rules uh, associated. Say for example, if we don't install marketing app, there would not having marketing security rules in our instance. Security rules, it's a, a, a set of privileges to access and manipulate entities, dashboard, forms, fields. Privileges are accumulated. So that means uh, you, you get, if you are a member of two or three teams, then you have all the privileges of those two or three teams. System administrator can access data, but system customizer cannot access data. Yeah, the customizer can change settings or, but cannot read the data. Best uh, practice assign the role to teams that add the user to that team. Organization owned record either have all the privilege or not. Yeah, that's for today.